let's uh, introduce all the people that are with us. Now, right now we're showing you David Dickinson's view from Florida of Jupiter. And, uh, David, I'm going to tell you that this isn't your best work. No, it's not. Jupiter's no. only about 10 degrees above the horizon right now, and it's, uh, we've got a yeah. cloud deck moving in, too. So. And this is not a insult to you, David. This is purely <laughs> physics here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got a very, you know, I'm, so just, you know, I'm not giving David a hard time. He's got, no. the, Jupiter is very close to the horizon, and he's looking through all kinds of atmosphere, and so it's, Jupiter's looking really soupy. But David has got big plans for us, which is that if all goes well, he, we should get Saturn rising, which will be our first official Saturn sighting of the season. So I cannot wait. Well, we, we, had it, we had it two weeks ago, virtual star party. Oh. Was it the one from, from yeah. you or from, from England? From me. Wah, wah. Yeah. From you? Was it good? It, no, it was really cruddy. It okay. Was, it, it was <laughs> really low to well, the horizon. Well, good. Good, good, yeah. <laughs> Looking through, well, you know what? Tonight is probably going to be the same, where it's going to yeah. be sort of through a lot of atmosphere, so, yeah. I may move over there momentarily. Okay, well, that'd be great, because you, it looks like your clouds. I know you've got a lot of clouds, so anyway, yeah. we're going to move on. Uh, we've got Gary Yanella, who I have met in person Absolutely. for the first time last week, which was awesome. You hung out uh, in the cave? I've been to the, <laughs> been to the man cave, and I don't, you can't kind of see, but just above Gary, there's a whole pile of, like, his airplanes that he's built and that's an awesome awesome room I gotta say I, I want to build one of these man cave things I'm happy that's, with it yeah it's amazing Kyle and I both have our own man caves do you really his guitar collection is out of control so um, uh, so and we got Mike Phillips who I've Hello. also met this yes. is awesome I've met everybody here. We just got to get everybody together David in the same room at the same time, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, and Mike is, uh, of course, in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, North, North, North Carolina. Carolina, yeah, North Carolina, yeah. Yes. And uh, you've got a view of M49, which is a yes. I'm, uh, I'm gonna make my way through the. Uh, yeah, we were gonna take bets on. Uh, it's it's just one of those uh, iffy, faint fuzzies. Yeah, um, it's actually a galaxy. And I think it's a uh, made a regular or an elliptical. And uh, it's in the tail of Leo, so I'm going to spend some time maybe get three or four. Well, I think it's important views. for people to know, right? You're our planetary guy, right? And you're branching out to DSOs with that telescope. So, I am, yes. Yeah. It's, it's being adapted very slowly here, so I'm climbing the learning curve. And on top of that, my skies are very iffy, but I haven't yeah. made one of these in so long. I can see stars. I'm going for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Um, Dr. Nicole Gallucci. It I'm saving your butt, trailer? honey. I am embedding the YouTube link in the events. Oh, are you? <laughs> yes. And oh, thank you. <laughs> I, forgot to, I forgot to do that. I, it's, I'm sure it's on a checklist somewhere, but it checklist. didn't even occur to me. I yeah. will share my checklist. Yeah. I did, did I write that checklist? I think I, you know. No, you didn't. I, I, I made a new one. No, it's right. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I know I did create a checklist. So you did, but I made a super my... anal retentive Nicole oh, version. Well, that's good, because I am not that. <laughs> so. Dr. Pamela Gay. Hi. How's it We're going? glad you're home. We <laughs> can record you. Astronomy Cast tomorrow. Are we gonna, you picked a topic, and I forgot what it was going to be. I forgot what it was going to be, too, but I can find it. It All was right. cool. All right. All right. We are terrible. I'll find I'll, it before I'll, the end of the show. I'll dig through the email, yeah. Uh, and we've got Dr. Stuart Foreman. Hi. <laughs> Not <laughs> astrophysicist doctor, yeah, actual yeah. doctor doctor. He's a real doctor. He's a real doctor. Oh, everybody's a real like doctor. A Everyone's a real doctor. But I just know how to cut people open. That's yeah, that's all. <laughs> we're on an airplane, <laughs> and someone goes, is there any doctor here? Pamela and Nicole and Thad will put up their hands, and they'll yeah. go, no, no. Real doctor. Real doctor. <laughs> and then Stuart will cheaply put up his hand and Useful work. doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real doctor. So yeah. We got Dr. Stuart Foreman. And you're clouded out tonight, but it was yes. good. And and I also hung out with Stuart while I was on my yes, West Coast trip. Nice so time. that was a great time, yeah. That was awesome. All right, and talk with Ad Zabo. Good evening. Who I missed. So you I'll get you next time. Some I'll I'll be out here for a while and yeah, like I said, sometime I gotta get up to the Pacific Northwest and uh it's paradise. It's awesome. You'll love it. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to go back to Gary. Oh, no. David's view. There it is. I'm, I'm Nice Saturn. I'm calling it the first Saturn of the season. So, you know, for most people who, like, don't understand, the, uh, the skies move over the course of the year. And, and so, planets move on top of the moving sky. Right. So why, you know, why do we not, why can we not see Saturn every night? Uh, it's either 
on the day side of the planet or frankly it's just behind the sun and and that you can't look through things it's just a problem it's a problem for finding asteroids too it's why they didn't see yeah. the one coming over russia because it was coming from the sunward side yeah so oh yeah great david it, I, I think this looks great it, is it a lot higher than jupiter was low it, it is yeah it's about maybe 15 20 degrees above the horizon here now so and so if people right now want to find Saturn with their own eyeballs, uh, how can they do it? Uh, look toward, uh, if, if you know the constellations anyway, right now here in Florida, it's rising off into the southeast. And it's not, it's in Libra, it's not quite in Virgo, but it's about, I'm looking with my hand here, about 15 degrees down to the lower left of FICA right now. Right. Or if you're not that familiar, take the, the Big Dipper. Hopefully, I mean, Big Dipper tends to be one that most people can find. And the handle makes an arc. Right? And if you follow the arc of the handle, I'm not sure I'm bending my finger enough to show Maybe I'll do it this way. Right? So you follow, follow the arc of the handle, it takes you through a bright star called Arcturus, which is somewhat reddish. Then you'll hit another bright star that's a very blue-white star. That's Spica. Saturn is going to be to the left of Spica. It'll be the next kind of bright thing over about the same brightness as Spica over in that region of the sky. It'll be kind of yellowish or cream color. Yeah. That's how most people describe yeah. it. Yeah. And, and so, uh, I've got a Stellarium view up if you want yeah. to show you. Yeah, and, and the way it gets described is arc to Arcturus and Spike to Spica. Okay, so I've, ha I've had arguments with this. Is it Spike to Spica or Speed down to Spica? Because I've totally I, heard both versions. I've heard, I've heard Speed on to Spica. Yes! Okay. <laughs> but spike to spike is this nice parallel construction. I think yeah. I like that better. I know. That's how I learned it at the Boston Museum of Science when I was a kid. Uh, but how long learn. will that last, right? Because Saturn is moving. A For couple of this, weeks? This it, year. It, I mean, it essentially... Reaches, it reaches opposition in three weeks. So it's not moving much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And because Saturn takes 30 years to go around the sun, it's it's going to hang around in this part of the sky, you know, for this year, next year. Then it'll start to drift over closer to Antares. But um, but it, it moves so slowly across the background of stars that this description will easily work yeah. for the, the rest of this year. For, for variable definitions of close. For, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or she's in hand grenades. <laughs> the, 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 ring, the rings are about 19 degrees tilted with respect to our line of sight right now. Too. Well, that's something else I was going to mention because, uh, you know, I know that Saturn, the angle of Saturn's rings has been changing over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. And in fact, a few years ago, you looked at Saturn and you just saw a ball. Yeah, it was yeah. just this edge on. In 2009, we were not pleased. It was the equinox. Well, it was the equinox, right. and it was also the International Year of Astronomy. So oh, yes. <laughs> the, the Cassini mission has been lucky enough to get to watch Saturn go through northern solstice, two equinox, and now it's heading towards southern solstice, uh, which is when the sun will be over its southernmost uh, low point on on the surface of Saturn, where the sunlight is coming straight down at a uh, perpendicular to the surface. Um, but as it varies, we go from equinox, it, it's edge on, to it just oscillates back and forth. And this is why Galileo saw it as, as going from having no rings to having ears. Now, <laughs> the reason that this is happening isn't because Saturn is actually tilting. It's because Saturn's maintaining a constant tilt relative to the stars. But its position relative to us is changing so that as it gets to be over here, we see a very different angle from when it's over here. And do you all like to listen to Pamela explain that stuff? Isn't that great? That's Astronomy Cast. So if you want to hear Pamela once a week explain in exactly that way, I highly recommend that you uh, subscribe to Astronomy Cast. And uh, we record and that live every Monday at noon. And, and tomorrow I, I've looked through my email and yep. we're going to be talking about the 50-year anniversary of Arecibo's construction. Oh, so we're going to do the Arecibo Observatory. That and, and I promise there will be discussions of James Bond and Jane, and uh, I am invincible! And contact. And will there be wow? The wow signal? 
I don't think that was Arecibo. Wasn't it? Oh, okay. No, right. it, wasn't. it was a SETI project, but I don't remember which. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, in Ohio State. It was in, I can't oh, remember the name of the project. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And the reason I'm laughing is is because you only call it an Ohio State if, if you dislike Ohio, because officially <laughs> the name is called the Ohio State, and those of us that are Ohio neutral just call it Ohio State. Yeah. So, so, Stuart, are you killing time just working on uh, Moon Mappers? I am indeed. I just thought I'd, oh! I'd, I'd, I'd give a shout out to Moon Mappers, and since I don't have uh, a telescope, I thought I'd show it off a little bit. Excellent. That's great. We have, totally love you. Have you guys not fully observed not the entire the moon? moon have you not mapped nope. every crater on the entire moon? The the issue is these images are uh, half a meter per pixel, which means each image is only about two hundred meters across. The moon is big, so how, it how much of the moon has been mapped at this resolution? The whole thing? Uh, with imagery, yes. By moon mappers, no. Right, and is so, it feasible for you? Like, do you, is it in your database? Would you be able to actually map the entire moon? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. It, um, it's our goal. Okay, all right. Well, so I want to remind people as well, again, not in good practice, we'll probably forget all kinds of things. And the thing I forgot was uh, the fact that you can uh, make comments and ask us questions and make suggestions. So there's a bunch of places you can do that. You can, uh, if you're watching this from the event page, which we remembered to embed at the last minute, uh, you can make a comment there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can make a comment on YouTube. And if you're watching this just in somewhere in somebody's stream on Google+, you should be able to make a comment there. And we hopefully will be able to see every version of that. You can also use Twitter. Just use the hashtag star party, and we should get it. Um, well, and you and thank you for the comments on my hat. I got this in Chile. So <laughs> That's great, a Chilean hat, a Chilean <laughs> astronomy hat. Is that what all the astronomers wear on? Uh... All the astronomers wear wear awesome fedoras. Do they? That's um, such an awesome image. <laughs> <laughs> they are the coolest. Just chilling at the telescope in their fedoras. Yeah. With the pisco sours. Um, so we got a question from Chet eleven thirty eight. What type of webcam is David using for Saturn? David. This is a Logtech C two thousand or two hundred and seventy webcam, but is not meant for astronomy. This is just an off the shelf cheap. Walmart webcam that was like $20. Now, did you I have to adapted. make any modifications to it to make it yeah. work like this? I, I had to take the, there's a little IR meniscus filter on it. I took that off, and I took the lens off the camera, and I have an eyepiece barrel, an inch and a quarter eyepiece barrel, where the lens would be. So essentially the telescope, the 8-inch telescope I got it hooked up to is the lens for the webcam. And, th and that's one way that we do this, and I know that Stuart has a kind of a different method that, that he uses, which right. is that he uses his, his DSLR, and I've actually got handy my DSLR adapter here, so I'll just hold that up. So Yeah, my, mine's very much a junkyard setting. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is bordering on a junkyard setup as well, but but so this is a T-ring adapter, right? And so what you can do is you can take the, this, this fits into the eyepiece, and then this part bolts on to the camera and so you don't have a lens on your camera on your DSLR camera in this case I've got a T3i and I you just clip it in and then you just stick that into your telescope and then that acts like your your CCD your your video camera or you know if you want to take your pictures it's a it's a really elegant way to to get go a good view um, to get good pictures of, of of the sky. Yeah, it's basically like having a huge telephoto lens on, on, on the camera. Yeah, yeah, it's a big lens, big telephoto lens on your camera. And, you know, it's a it's a really great way to do it. My setup will do planets, uh, the moon, uh, the sun when it's filtered, and bright double stars. It won't do nebula or anything like that. It's, it's not sensitive enough to do that. Do you, you should try with a DSLR if you if you have one. I, mean, I, I have one. I, I do. Uh, I've got a Nikon. It doesn't do live imaging. I, I would like to get the new Canon. Uh, I think it's the 60DA that's optimized for astrophotography. Yeah. Let's get uh, Canon to. We'll talk to Canon and see if we can get them to give us some samples or something. Yeah. Let's get some samples <laughs> happening. All right. Well, I'm move on. Yeah. Let me get onto Gary's view here because this is. We're gonna have to say goodbye to this. Nope. Oh no. Yeah. A couple more weeks, and it's not going to be for the summer. <laughs> now on this one, oh, but this is one of the few things getting. I can find with my Questar with no finders. <laughs> so I can zoom in a little bit, and you can see some of the details. Mm. So that's at the full resolution of the camera. 
or drop back to there. Wow. I figured figure I'll hit this uh, horse head and rosette, and this may be the last week. Could be yeah, one potentially. Or two more. Uh, Christopher Butler asks, "How far does Saturn vary its angle to us? I know that we've seen an edge on, but how flat can it appear to us?" It can go up to about 27 degrees plus or minus, so I guess 27 degrees towards the south and 27 degrees towards the north. So this is just slightly more tilted than our own planet is. Oh, we didn't mention what this is. This is the Orion Nebula. What, you all? I was talking about Saturn. No, no, I understand. I understand. No, no, but this this thing on the screen, which people are like, oh, this is nice. This thing. A long time in repeat viewers <laughs> should can't see yeah, what recognize it. On. No, I know, I know. I always just forget. Like, we're so, you know, I mean, while the Orion Nebula is in season, we try to get <laughs> as many images of it as we can because it's just such a spectacular object. And at the same time, when it's not in season, then that's all anybody wants to see. So, yeah. When it's can so we see the Orion Nebula? That's so gorgeous like when you zoom in. It's like turbulent. You can actually yeah. see the motions of the gas. Yeah. That's a gorgeous picture. How, how long is this, this exposure, Gary? This is a one minute. <laughs> and, and what's cool is, is it's not actually turbulence. It just looks that way. What we're right, actually right. seeing is, is places where there's more material that appear dark and where there's less material, uh, it's more light is able to shine through, so we're just seeing differences in the density that are usually caused by compression waves rather than, than by turbulence. But right, that's sure what it looks is, like. Is, is a lot smaller scale, yeah. And, right. and requires much higher way. densities. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So Ngrip on YouTube asks, is Jupiter, and in particular Europa, visible at this time of year? Thad, is Jupiter visible right now? In the uh, evenings just before sunset, and I mean, Europa orbits Jupiter every three and a half days, roughly. So one place that I'll usually check is, it's called skyviewcafe.com. And at the top, if you go there with your browser, you have Java enabled. It will come up at the top of the, the display. There will be a couple of tabs, one for the sky, one for the ecliptic. And one says moons slash GRS. So that's what moons of Jupiter and Saturn are visible at that time, as well as the great red spot, GRS. And so um, you can look there to see which moons are visible. Also, if there are shadow transits, if a moon is transiting, and I've found it to be way more accurate than even using Stellarium or other programs. WinDew posts is probably best, but that's kind of tricky to figure out. Here, go to skyviewcafe.com, click on moon slash GRS tab, and it'll t show you which ones are visible at any particular time. So, um, so is it visible? Well. I guess I could go check. Um, well, David could just see it, but right now, yeah. I mean, for us on the West Coast, it's absolutely visible, right? Yes, they, yes. I, nice and I, ran, I ran in Starry Night. All four moons were visible at the beginning of the star party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jupiter's more than rising now. So. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you watch when we do, I mean, we're going to start losing Jupiter now, but, but often when we do have Jupiter, we'll try and get the, try and view the moons and also try to identify which one is Europa and which one's Io and, and try to run through them, so... Uh, hopefully, maybe next week we can get another crack at it and have somebody on the West Coast do some planetary stuff. Yeah. So, and and Astro, and Astro guys is pointing out in Twitter that the Moon will move into the picture for next week's virtual star party and pass yeah. near Jupiter next Sunday. So I I suspect I'm going to be outside with my 300 millimeter lens and I got one of those awesome tracking tripods. Did that you? Very oh, happy. I, I, I haven't. We haven't had clear skies while I've been yeah. home yet. So as soon as we get a clear sky, I'm going to take it out to the farm and uh, see what yeah. see what I can see. I, I nearly got one, and I realized that I would just need to use it to collect rainwater, and so I figured I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I was going to move to Mike's view, but. I'm just seeing Windows, Mike. I see something there. Yeah, I I, I was shooting M87 after four, M49, and it, it's kind of kind of boring. So I'm I'm gonna go to 89, which I think only is an optical. Just, just as <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not that cool. See, uh, Douglas Friday is recommending uh, the Night Watch book by Terence. Yes. Dickinson, and I absolutely agree. Where's my Night Watch? I used to Maybe sell that when I was in high school. Yeah, I, I, whenever I anyone them. wants a recommendation for a, you know, for a book for astronomy, that's the one that I cut my teeth on. I, mm -hmm. I learned all my constellations and all the objects in the sky with Nightwatch. I think the he's nice Canadian. Thing, so the nice thing about it is that it's just, um, it just shows you the, the 
bright stuff and the stuff that you can see. It doesn't show you every single star in the sky and you know the tiny little galaxies that you know you know you'll never see without a sixteen inch scope. It's it just it just gives you the highlights. It's, yeah. it's a really nice beginner book. I still use it. Yeah. Um, Graphius seventy nine is mentioning that some DSLR cameras have trouble coming to focus with some telescopes. You can use a Barlow lens to fix this. Some Barlow's a removable lens cell, so it only magnifies at one point five times instead of two. So that that's exactly Exactly true. So what he's talking about is back focus, uh, which is a problem that I had with my telescope. So um, and so the problem is is that with the the DSLR, it the CCD can't get close enough to the point where the focus needs to work, and so it's always out of focus. And so uh, you need to to put it on a, a barlow. It's kind of an extender, and then it and then it'll work in focus. So if you're having trouble with the back focus, you can use a barlow. Um, Graphia79 oh. also pointed out something interesting about the date, uh, December 21st in the year 2020. Got a little ways to go. He says, put, put that up in Stellarium and see what happens. So I just go over here and do it. At about uh, 5.30 in the evening, Jupiter and Saturn are right on top of each other. Share your view. Let's oh, see this. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so uh, I didn't even realize it. I'm like, okay, it's Saturn. Big deal. And then I try and read the word Saturn, and I don't know if you can see this, but Jupiter and Saturn are right wow. on top Zoom of each other. Wow, zoom in. Enhance and uh, magnify. What year is this? Oh my god! 2020! Enhance and magnify. I don't know how! Roll your scroll wheel. Not. Roll your scroll she's wheel. She's on a I'm map. On my laptop. Uh, <laughs> Three finger salute. <laughs> Do you have command, a page up? Command plus. Command plus, uh, yeah. Oh, whoops. <laughs> open, <laughs> I don't know. Open what Apple Shift C. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, I went, I on went, a Mac, you can't do it. Well, while she fiddles around, I'm shooting M89, which is just as boring as the yeah, other two that's here. that's way more exciting than... <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to move to... more exciting than me. Okay, you, you let us know when you've got I'm it. I'm not going to. I don't have a mouse here. I think, oh. the, I think the problem with that conjunction for us Northern Hemisphere folks is that it's, it's at a fairly low declination, so it'll never really... If we're still altitude. doing virtual star parties in, uh, in seven, seven years? years, we will absolutely... <laughs> We'll send it. someone to the correct place. Yeah. Yeah. So let's all meet up in Australia. Yeah. Uh, Jim Meeker, Pamela is asking for a uh, for you to post a link to the tracking camera mount. Now Gary oh, is the yeah. one who got us all hooked on them. So what is it, Gary? It's the Orion. Uh, yeah, um, Orion. If you just go to telescopes.com. Yeah. And, and look up the accessories. I can grab it here in a minute. Sure. It's actually telescope.com, not telescopes. No. Right. Oh, telescope. Okay, yeah. thank you. They're very different. Uh, well, I'm going to move to your, your beautiful horse head nebula here, Gary. Okay. And this be the horse head. I approve. Um, and I'll let uh, somebody explain it. This star right here is uh, extremely overexposed because when you look at the Orion Nebula, this is the left hand star of the belt. Uh, I'll attack. Right? I'll attack, yes. Yep. So I'll or let Orionis. How, so how high above the horizon is this for you, Gary? Uh, right now it's about uh, 30 degrees. Okay. What's the moon doing right now? It's almost new. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jim Craig There's asked, an app for that. For I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I don't even have it handy. Um, what's that date? So Jim Craig's asking, what's that date again? I have Stellarium up and running. Uh, oh, and the command to zoom on Stellarium is control plus arrow key up. That that didn't work for me. Command that plus just made arrow it. key up. Command little apple. Plus command plus. Yep. yep, little apple and then arrow up. I've got it ready to go. I'm screen sharing it right now. All right. So all right, somebody else, just, somebody with actual mouse. Doing step it. step aside, Nicole. <laughs> Let, uh, I'm going to install I'm Stellarium done. right now on this new no, computer. Good. I'm and uh, <laughs> no, I don't see it that. No. No, I just see a big open screen. <laughs> it's, okay, uh, Pamela is showing us the. Uh, the it's top. December twenty first, twenty twenty, which right. means uh, of course there's going to be some kind of. We need the world to will now. end. We Our need to start now end. with the apocalyptic theory. There, there will so be an astronomy ridiculous. cast trip for that. Oh, <laughs> will there? Wait, you guys are all coming for the solar eclipse here, right? Yeah. Have is, is, the, is the solar eclipse going to pass your location? The next two it's solar like eclipses 20 will cross. miles south of us. They will cross. The next two solar eclipses nice. will cross at a point a few miles south of us. So wow. we're gonna get so I was, was going to go up to Oregon, but Oregon is always um, 
uh, iffy with the weather. Yeah, the weather could and be dicey. And we're more fun. Well, you know, you, <laughs> Stuart, I think it depends if you if you go east of the the Cascades, it's a desert. So I'm That's planning true. I'm planning on heading. Sorry, sorry, Nicole and Pamela, but I'm planning on heading east of the Cascades um, for August twenty first, twenty seventeen. Yeah, I think I'll join okay. you there. That sounds close to me. Yeah, yeah well, I'll Idaho. Idaho. Well, I, I, we should probably have a meetup there then, because that's kind of where I was going to go. There'll be a West yeah. Coast Aww. meetup. There'll be a Midwest meetup. There'll be an East Coast meetup. And we'll all be streaming. We want a desert. Yeah. We're wow. not Google Glass. Um, <laughs> and you're going to have it in North Carolina too. Man, this is crazy. It's yeah. going to be. This is going to be outrageous. Yeah, the tail end kind of goes like pretty near the North Carolina South Carolina border, doesn't it? It kind of goes right out over like. Charleston yeah, and Myrtle Beach. Yeah, it was, it, I don't think I get it directly here in Raleigh, but I think it was close enough to, yeah, I it, think. It, a, a decent and so what's the right date of that eclipse again? August 21st, 2017. And, and of course, right we'll probably, want a, live, it, we'll probably want a live broadcast it, but I, I just want to watch it. It's, it's a the music one. It's hitting Seattle. It's hitting Nashville. It's hitting St. Louis. So pick country, <laughs> blues, or rock, and Brunch, you've got a city yeah. choice. Have, have I told you my crazy idea for this yet? No. Uh oh. No. Like, look at brace for impact, Pamela. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if somebody, and maybe somebody's already done this, composed like a symphony orchestra, like for an eclipse, like a yeah, we talked like a about soundtrack this one for the last to an one. eclipse. Yeah, we could and get someone to do that. Wouldn't it be cool to like get a band or get like an orchestra ready and actually play? This music that's been composed for a solar eclipse while everyone's watching the eclipse. And it depends like watching on the eclipse, eclipse because in a movie. they're they're not all the same length. The one right. So so they would have to time it and then have right. the music and then have it be or have it be silent during the the part where it's actually Good just a long that. string. <laughs> we we have time to get that composed, and I'm sure we can find someone to do it, and I'm sure we can raise the funding. I think I'd, so I'd, we I'd, should I'd put do the that. idea out there, and at some point a composer will go, "Hey, I could do that," and then. Boom! This is how this works. I, I think it's a cool idea. idea. That's how. That's how. That's how the whole star party idea came up with in the first place. So, um, that's right. That's right. all right. Uh, you know what? I we're not getting a lot of new stuff here. I hate we're we're are we, are doing we done this. Talking about uh, the horse. Yeah, head? no, we're done. Uh, we love we love the horse head nebula. That's great. <laughs> What's and the flame. Uh, more, more, more. Um, <laughs> we were talking about the the platforms there is I just was looking it up in the sky and telescope this month there's a they review a new platform which calls the iOptron Op sky tracker a news that. tracking platform for camera only astrophotography they say it's among the best ever um, so uh, it, it's it might be an alternative to the Orion if you're, if you're looking for it's it. It's a pretty good price on that too. I saw it was like three hundred dollars. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah so I um, so if you go to the Sky and Telescope and uh, this month on their uh, Sky and Telescope test reports, it's the Ioptron Sky Tracker. Just since we were talking about it. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna try and get get Corey to join us. Uh, he just caught an ISS image, uh, an image of the ISS pass over his head, and uh, was cool. gonna was gonna try and bring it into the hangout. So, nice. uh, Bishy Bob says, "I need more astronomy cast, please." Yes, we yeah, apologize. We know. We're deeply aware of. We the have up to episode two ninety three done. I we we understand that the thirteen of those aren't online. We're yes. working on it. Thirteen? Oh, okay. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. All right. They're coming. Corey, how's we'll it going? We'll have a deluge. Yay, Corey! Uh, how long hey, has it been we've had Corey in this? This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so, so Corey, can you explain? You're just you were just texting with me, and can you explain what you just did? Uh, well, there was an international space station pass above my house or near my house, I guess. Um, just about 45 minutes ago, and I captured it on film, and it's actually framed and stacked pretty well, so I can share that. Yeah, didn't we talk about this being live, though? We did. <laughs> um, You're late. <laughs> 45 minutes, Razor! 45 Razor! minutes is not... This is a transient event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck catching that live. All right. Well, uh, too, let's, 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 let's take a look at Gary's rosette because it's awesome, and then uh, and that will give Corey a chance to sort of queue up his image of the ISS and Sweet. we'll let it pass that it's 45 minutes late this time. 45, and Fra yeah, 45 Fraser loves the rosette. I do 
<laughs> <laughs> so we always go to that. Uh, when it's in view. When it's in view. <laughs> Now, if you could see this in real life, you'd see that it's a beautiful red nebula. Oh, my God. Perfect. We've watched this too many times. <laughs> For so, those who don't know what just happened, <laughs> go watch the uh, uh, three-minute piece that Google did on the Virtual Star Party. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, guys, it's been almost a year at this point. We're still I, know, I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, the next Google I.O. is coming up soon. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't get into it. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Um, wah, wah. So I, I need someone with a PhD in astrophysics or astronomy or even radio astronomy to explain what this <laughs> hey! is. Hey! Hey! <laughs> but but not an oh, interpretation. It's visible. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> Time to throw the hat down. Let's go. All right, so we've got an emission nebula here. <laughs> this is hydrogen that we're seeing. Gary is shooting with a filter that is particularly tuned to a certain wavelength that hydrogen atoms that are uh, glowing with this, this particular shade of red, imagine it being red, um, uh, so as the electrons are, are dropping from higher energy levels to lower energy levels, they give off this characteristic light. So what we're seeing is concentrations of hydrogen gas getting pumped full of energy by all these hot new stars that are around there. And those was dark and those dark lanes, that was great. Dark lanes, yeah. So that's denser material. Um, that is the dust when I don't clean my house. Yeah. <laughs> can, we, <laughs> can we just squidge that off of the picture? No, the, you can't. No. Because those structures are light years across. And they are potentially collapsing to form new stars. So we're, um, yeah, could be, you know, essentially watching stars being born when we take a photo of this thing. All right, I see Corey's images there. Awesome! The space station. Look at that. That's, space That's no space station. Oh. That's no moon. I wonder why it's a dashed line like that, because the, the sucker's not rotating. I was just going to ask if it's rotating. It's dashed yeah. because it's, it's multiple exposures. Oh, that's why. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, so, 20, so the gaps think, 20 are your shutter seconds. flash. So each each dash represents about twenty seconds in, of real time. Okay. Oh, so your camera can just dump raw. It doesn't have to. It doesn't do any. You, you have it set not to do any background processing because I know if, if I was to try this with my uh, with my DSLR, it would say, "Okay, well, you took a nice long exposure. I'm going to sit here and integrate out your dark frame for you." So. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't. I have it all manually set up. So um, could you have nice. have done like with uh, Magic Lantern and actually done like a big long one long exposure? Dark current. You can do a bulb. I could have done a bulb exposure to do like you know, three minutes or whatever if I wanted to. Um, the only problem is what you see there. I mean, I still do have light pollution, so I the whole sky would just get blown out. Yeah. And not only that, but these CCDs aren't cooled enough that that you don't get too much noise when you do that long of an exposure. So the longer yeah. the exposure, the more what's called dark current, which is what it's automatically trying to subtract out of Thad's images because he hasn't bus to turn it off. Yeah, um, yeah it's... It, no, don't do that. <laughs> That's really cool. And uh, <clears throat> and so how did you find out that this was going to be happening? Because it looks like you were set up and ready to go. Yeah, there's uh, there's just an app on my phone that uh, alerts me whenever ISS passes or iridium flares or I forget what else is, are going to happen that, that's visible above my latitude and longitude. So. Is it a heavens uh, above? No, it's called ISS. Um, I don't even remember ISS notification or something like that. I'll That's look at awesome. it. Uh, and you've you've moved into ISS your new place, right? Is this from your new house? Yeah, this is from my new house. It's in my backyard. Yeah. Congratulations! I, it almost sounds like your house is a little echoey still. Oh, uh, maybe. Well, yeah, it is. It's hard floor, so that yeah. sounds about right. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations for getting in there. Oh, uh, Stuart's got a view of the uh, of the rosette here. In well, this this is this is a stacked in process, you know, three hour view. But I just wanted to show the red uh, compared to Gary's, you know, what it's kind of the kind of the hydrogen alpha aspect of it. So this is not live, um, but I thought it's uh, share because Gary's got his. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I recommend. So people are recommending ISS detector for Android. Um, uh, NASA spot the station. 
Yeah. That's and, what I and, use to guys as detecting. And I really like uh, Twist, T-W-I-S-S-T, as a, as a Twitter. It's a Twitter address. And so you follow that, and then you'll get a notification. You'll get a, a mention in Twitter when the space station is about to fly overhead. So if you're constantly tracking Twitter and that's the way you receive your information, then you'll get that. So, yeah, at T-W-I-S-S-T. We don't know anyone like that. No, we don't know anybody. Um, well, awesome, Corey. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I can't wait to see, you know, once you've got your new observatory set up, uh, you've got plans to build, like, a, like, an actual enclosure for your telescope, right? Yeah, I'm planning on building just a shed with a roll-off roof that I can use um, and just leave everything set up at all times. So. And I how are the skies? The I mean, you've, you've got some light pollution here. How, how dark are your skies there? Uh, they're actually really good. That is, the ISS just happened to be going over um, some nearby, like, warehouses that have some lights on them, and it was really low. Um, so, but actually, when I go, when I go at, I don't know, anywhere from about 40 degrees and higher, um, I can do, what did I do? I did 45-second exposures at ISO 3200 and stacked them, and it was nice and dark and wonderful, so... That's great. Um, one, I know. I mean, one of the things that we've been talking about is bringing those Scott, those star trails into into a view at some point. So, yeah, I know it's yeah, rolling love around your head. It. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Awesome. Well, you you can stick around for the rest of the show if you want. We've probably got another fifteen minutes or so, but if you need to book, that's also fine. But it was great. It was you were just meant, you were just mentioning to me that you got this uh, done, and I wanted to show it in the star party. So, that's awesome. <laughs> you want me to share? I can share um, one of my. Uh, single exposures from last Monday, if you'd like. Yeah. So you can see what it would look like from my sky. Yeah. Can you get on there? Thad, while we're waiting, you can turn off the, the dark subtraction in your camera. Um, I'm pretty oh. sure I'd, I'd seen that, but just, the you know, yeah, I've just recently got a DSLR, and so it's it's still in the, the very much new playing kind of phase. So, Which DSLR yeah. did you get, yeah. Dan? Uh, my sister-in-law sold us her um, her uh, Canon D80. Or not, yeah. yeah. No. Nikon D80. Nikon D80, sorry. Yeah. I don't know Nikon. Yeah, it's a mystery no, to us. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, okay. Um, Here we go. Here's, here's Corey's view. Oh, nice. Woo! Yeah. Well, that's just what, what kind of cluster is that? That's M14. <laughs> That's a globular cluster. Um, so how long is that exposure? That's a 20-second uh, ISO 3200. Really? Yeah. And if you look over here, I don't know if you can see it, but mm. there's, a, there's a galaxy, and I don't remember the NGC number of it. But, oh. Um, that's that tra I mean, that, the tracking on this is just phenomenal, then. And this yeah, is your deep... Sorry, Corey, this good. is your DIY wedge, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's the DIY EQ platform for my uh, Dobsonian. Yep. So. That's pretty sweet. Well, it's wedge. okay. That one's pretty cool. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pop up one other one. Then... I missed it. Which globular cluster are we looking at? M13. M13. Very pretty. Let's see. The oldest thing you will see with your eyes. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's really good. But I mean, I think people need to understand how important this is. This image is because Corey has a Dobsonian, a, a really big. Like, it's, it's a twelve-inch Dobsonian, um, yeah. but it's you know they're renowned. They're big light buckets, but they're really they don't do any tracking. And so mm -hmm. Corey has home built his oh. own uh, tracking mount for it. So he that's built awesome. his own wedge and integrated a, a, a drive into it. And, and so this 20-second exposure, if you didn't have this wedge going to actually track the sky, it would just be a blur of stars. So, and, and 20 seconds exposure is so quick. I mean, mm -hmm. Gary, how long is this exposure here of your, of your galaxies? Uh, this is one minute. That's a minute. <laughs> That's so, 81 and 82. Yeah. I'm I'm really excited, Corey. We need to we need to have you back, man. Thank this you, is Chet. Great. Thank you, yeah. Chet. Eleven thirty-eight. <laughs> sombrero. I got the sombrero yeah. too. That. Oh, oh look nice. at that. Love wow. that dust lane. Wait, wow. Love that dust lane. Wait, do you That's... have a color CCD? That's just using my DSLR. Oh, 
Oh. Wait, this is what we're talking about. This is the this is the magic of these these modern DSLRs. It's amazing. Wow. This is a twenty second. No, this Jake, is a stack. This Jake is a Amber stack. is already working on my soundtrack for the solar clip. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Uh, Somebody else is Helen Green. Yeah, we got two people working orchestra. on it. They should collaborate then. Yeah. Uh, now, I want to point out that Dan McCauley uh, found that the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in 2020 that I failed to embiggen, uh, they passed within six arc minutes of each other. Wow. <laughs> wow. You, so you'd be able to see some of Jupiter's moons in the planet. Yeah, superimposed on, on <laughs> Saturn. <laughs> Depending if you're on the right, I mean, would the position on Earth matter at all a little bit yes it might yeah. wow yeah you would get parallax of seeing yeah. where yeah. where the moons are relative to saturn because of uh yeah which means you could actually start to do distance measurements which is kind of cool oh that's so pretty cool so I, I, this one this sombrero is a single exposure not stacked not edited gosh. at all yep. so right off the camera so. wow yeah. and and not to shy away from i mean i mean gary's got M81 and M82 up here, yeah. but the sombrero is, is an interesting object because typically when you see dust lanes like this, you think spiral galaxy. Spiral galaxies tend to have yeah. the gas and dust that form new stars. The sombrero, though, seems to be a bit ambiguous, and longer exposures show that the central portion looks more elliptical or possibly lenticular, and then you have this ring of dust around the outside. So I remember kind of going over this with students the one semester and saying, well, there's dust. It's got to be a spiral. And then I looked it up and they say, well, we're not so sure anymore that you know, the, the central regions do look more like what an elliptical or, or lenticular galaxy would look like. Well, and speaking of, I want to get to, uh, to, get to Gary's view because it's gorgeous as well. So M81 and M82. That's what it are. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and that's just fantastic. Look, at, I mean, really, look at the the spiral arms there in uh, which is the one on the right? The one on the right is M eighty one. Is M eighty one? That's M eighty one. And are the two in some kind of gravitational interaction? Yes. 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 If you look at the neutral hydrogen, if you look at the neutral hydrogen with a radio telescope like the VLA, you actually see the hydrogen discs are interacting. So out yeah. where we don't see the visible light stars interacting, but the gas is actually interacting, and we can see that with a radio telescope. VLA They're just skirting through each other. Yeah, we can actually resolve the interactions when the VLA is in its largest mm -hmm. configuration. Uh, Tom Nath is saying that Nikons don't have shutoff for dark frames. It does have auto dark subtracts. Okay. For the Nikon. Okay. So I'm uh, stuck. Chet, 11, Chet 1138 says, how big of a dob are you using? So I know he's got a 12 inch. I mean, I think it's really important just to know just the investment. I mean, yeah. you know, what's a 12 yeah. inch dob run? Are you talking about mine, Fraser? Yeah, yeah. It's a ten. It's a ten inch. A ten. What does a ten inch dog run like? Uh, I paid five hundred dollars. Yeah, they're not yeah. that expensive. <laughs> so I mean, just the, the the quality of the images that you're getting. I mean, the dark skies are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, right? But but having that wedge and that that ten inch Dobsonian, that's just that's phenomenal. Yeah, right? it's it's awesome. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to to sort of be doing this live. Do it live. Do it live. Um, Do it live. Do it live. Uh, so I mentioned, a little bit before. Washed out the light from the clouds. So, yeah. so I, I mentioned earlier that M13 is the oldest thing you can see, and TWW1FA asks, is it really older than M31? Uh, yes, the yeah. stars in a yes. globular cluster are older. However, the other thing you might be thinking of is M31 is further away, so the oldest photons, the photons that have traveled the furthest to hit your naked eye, Probably the Andromeda Galaxy. That you can resolve with your eye. There are resolve like photons from the most distant background galaxies sure. hitting your eye. You just can't resolve you it. You just don't know it. But the, yeah, the, the, the uh, furthest thing you can see would be Andromeda. But those, those globular clusters, all those stars were around the before old. the galaxies were even put together. Okay, so best name on YouTube here, Cognitive Disco Dance. What? Where is that? <laughs> it says, I'm interested in finding out more about that Dobsonian EQ mount of Corey's URL. So, uh, so Corey, uh, has anyone... I know you've posted some, like... Uh, yeah, actually, Corey, you want to do an article for CosmoQuest? Um, I... <laughs> say yes, say yes, say yes. But say don't yes, you... No, but don't you have, like, a... a sort I have of like a... a I have a, a on bunch my of images website, that you took. I've got all of the photos and there's like a, a an album on my Google Plus page as well. And so basically how I built it in pictures. So, so and, awesome. and where do we find your website? Because I know you often will do some like 
you know, back before you joined us, you're doing some live streams of the moon and stuff. So where's your website? Yeah, yeah. It's um, I'll put I'll put it on the to toolbox here. It's called oda.odipsate.com. It's a bad name, but <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But do a search for Corey on uh, on Google Plus, and you'll find all of his pictures and and a lot of stuff. So he's got and, lots and of I will sweet there. talk him into writing a summary that links to all the places you need to go for Cosmic Quest. Yeah, all right. Works. Um, how's your clouds there, David? Uh, not too good actually. I, I was trying to acquire a Titan. And, oh. Uh, and as I took it out, the clouds rolled in front, so I lost my lock on Saturn. And Mike, what are you using? Are you using what image are you using? Is it a uh, like what camera are you using? Because I'm uh, yeah, I have a Canon. It's a 7D. Mine is not modded like uh, Corey's is, though, and I think I'm gonna hit hit that part of it next because I love this quite a bit. Mine, the one I used recently is not modded anymore. I actually oh, sold really? that. So those images are from an unmodded uh, Canon Canon 550D. Are you in the modding business now that you sold it? Maybe, maybe I'll pay you to mod it. No, no, I'm going to send. I'm going to send this one away to get modded because I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> Are you going to let some professional mod it? Yeah, well, well, you got I, me. I had, guy, I had a guy mod mine. You got me yeah. hooked on uh, on the Magic Lantern, and I've been, you know, using that like crazy now. I love it. So if anyone's got it. a Canon, like a Canon T3i, T2, oh. Oh, uh, cool. 60D Magic Lantern, lets you put a whole bunch of additional functionality on your camera. Quite safely. Somebody's shooting satellites at M100. Yes, that's <laughs> me. I didn't know I could, you know, look at that. There we go. Very nearby object, very distant object. <laughs> All in one frame. Yeah. Wow. Is that, um, that's uh, how far is M100? Because I'm totally lost with all these galaxies here. This is my part of the Virgo planet. cluster, so um, it's it's about six, 60 to 65 million light years yeah. away. Really? Yep. They're the current uh, updated distance. They change these things every time they remeasure the Hubble distance constant. Is difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. It, they're they're putting it at fifty five thousand light years with latest numbers. Fifty five million. Yeah. Million? Million. What did I say? Right. Fifty five thousand. Thousand. Oh yeah. Sorry. Three more zeros. Fifty five. Fifty five thousand would put it. I think we'd be in a world of hurt if it was that. Close. It would be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The sky would look awesome though. I mean, can you imagine? You hit what the Milky it? Way, and then there's this other one like <laughs> coming in. At oh, angle. I've seen the simulations There'd be total of what it looked like when Andromeda. <laughs> yeah. And milky. Yeah. Oh. The milk Andromeda. Yeah. I want to be alive then. Yep. <laughs> no. And as we mentioned, the people are, are arguing between Milk Dramada and Milko Media and Milk Dramada. Milk Dramada, yeah. Milk Dramada just rolls off the tongue better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right, beans. Uh, so I think we'll we'll wrap up in like another five minutes. Um, but uh, before we do, and just to make sure we get this part uh, wrapped up, so I just want to make sure that oh hey, there's Saturn. David's got Saturn back. Oh yeah, squirrel. <laughs> 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 Um, so, so okay. So uh, let's just make sure that everyone knows how they can see more of what everybody does because everybody is awesome. So, uh, <laughs> if we wanted to find out more Corey Schmitz, where do we find you, Corey? Did you put your website into your Hangout? And you've muted yourself. You can find me on Google Plus is the best place. Um, I, I put stuff on my website too, but -A not as much. A dot Otis eight dot com. Yeah. yeah, I need a better name on there. But, yeah, uh, like yeah, I don't update it as much as Google. Schmidt's mounts. How about that? You'll do like an art, art. You know, you'll do like an artisanal uh, mount for people, like just yeah, handcrafted yeah, exactly. with. Well, like, the thing is, I can't, I can't take stuff. a ton of credit for it because I learned how to build it. You know, from a lot of help online and everything. Um, you can there's still a take Yahoo credit. Shoulders uh, of giants. Nothing yeah, wrong exactly. with that. Really, yeah. too, uh, you can make them out of like happy. you know mahogany and teak and like have like <laughs> brass, brass because you know like re exposed brass gears like very steep. Brass so, you know. highlights yeah. in ebony that has been yeah, exactly. acquired yeah. at great cost. Yeah, it's <laughs> mounts. Um, all right, so David Dickinson, uh, where do we find it? I see you've got your I Twitter am. handle there. Yes, I am on Astro Guys with a Z. Uh, there's also a blog that's Astro Guys with a Z. I am on Universe Today. I am on Lisbosaur, Canada.com, and I may have, well, I do have an article lined up with Sky and Telescope that has honorable mention of the 
virtual star party. Hopefully, sometime this summer it should be coming cool. out. Awesome. Yeah. No, you've been right. you've been putting out a bunch of great uh, articles on the today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, Gary, where do we find more Gary? We uh, I found M one hundred and one. Wow. <laughs> here, and this one. Oh, let me let me put it over here. The M101 here with a satellite going through it. And this little blob down here I'm just looking up is NGC 5474 Spiral Galaxy. Cool. That's awesome. And they cannot be the same galaxy that Mike was looking at because Mike's on the East Coast and Gary's on the West Coast. Yeah. And those satellites are pretty near to Earth's surface relatively. Yeah. yeah. So. I've, I've oh, had yeah. uh, in one nine-minute uh, time on a target, I've had th three different satellites move yeah. through. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> They're oh, there. And, like flats. And fun. Mike, is that your Twitter handle? So yeah, no, I I would just search for this. I'm kind of like all over the place, yeah, and unfortunately, right. you can't just look up my name because I have a fairly common name. So yeah. if you search for M A P H I L L I one yeah. four. But your but your yeah, but your website's got a really great sort of a lot of your astrophotography and and right. again some really great images of your telescope setup. So, what's your website? If, if a person yeah. searches for that. You, well, you search, yeah, search for this handle, but you yeah. can go to, uh, it's the same user ID, it's um, mapihilli14.webs.com. .webs.com. I use it to front end all of my various endeavors from planetary to deep sky. To, yeah. Awesome. Um, oh, and just to remind everybody, uh, if you want, by all means, post images into this, uh, into the event. So if you go to the event, there's a button that lets you upload images. And of course, with the astronomers, they often do this. But even if you're, you know, just an amateur astronomer and you've been taking pictures, by all means, put them in. Ideally, pictures that you've taken, but, uh, you know, ideally, images that have anything to do with astronomy would be nice. Uh, yeah, but, none yeah. of those Hubble pictures. We see those all the time. Yeah, we see those are boring. <laughs> um, Cool. And Nicole, thank you very much for joining us with your with your cool Chilean hat. Anytime, awesome. sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was really sunny. It wasn't prepared for summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um you're sort of like alabaster skin, just couldn't handle the high altitude oh, direct sunlight. It's amazing from... I didn't get a sunburn. It's truly amazing. Well you're in that yeah, in that high altitude it. too, yeah. Oh, they give out like SPF fifty sunblock. At, on the site. <laughs> oh, do they? That plus yeah. checking our blood oxygen level. Oh, it was it was it was it was good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of a dangerous place to spend any time in, right? High dangerous altitude. Place. It's a dangerous place to bring a hundred yeah. journalists from around the world. Yeah. So high to altitude, yeah. Hot, you know, sunlight, very dry, yep. good beer, very dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, we weren't allowed to. Well, we weren't supposed to drink, but yeah. the employees are not allowed to drink 24 hours before going on site. They actually yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Dr. Pamela Gay. So we're going to see you tomorrow for Astronomy Cast. Astronomy Cast. Yeah. And, and I have to confess something. I did not realize that Astro Guys, who I knew on Twitter, and David yeah. Dickinson, who I knew on Google Plus, <laughs> was the same human. Was well, the same person. Now. There you go. That is I. That's the same, the same person. Also, the uh, writer on Universe Today. So yeah, they are all the same person. Yeah. I did all right. Like, I had three of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. I know you had cloudy skies, and you were often one of our most dependable people. And yet, the uh, your your weather is uh, was not con you know, nope. not helping out. So so next week. Yep. Wah wah. Wah wah. And there's Stuart's uh, Twitter handle. Whatever this yeah. Twitter thing is. Stu Foreman. At. St what? Stu Foreman. Oh, Stu Foreman. For I get it. I get it. Nicole, do you see it? No. <laughs> what oh, boy. For? This one's going to haunt us for the next month, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> no. Stuart, Stuart's Twitter hang handle is S24Man. Stu. I can't see it. Oh. It's all fuzzy. Stu, oh, I see it. Stu Foreman, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good cover story. Yeah. <laughs> And that's Put your head down over your brow. <laughs> and so if so, if we want to uh, to take your compelling astronomy class, Dad, where do, where do we uh, where do we go? So I'm at Cerritos College in uh, in Norwalk, California. Or um, follow me on Twitter at AstroThad or uh, Google Plus, just Thad Zabo on Google Plus. And one so. thing that's very interesting is to check out Rate My Professor. With <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't ever do that for, to anyone you like. His 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 ratings are very good. 
He's oh, not until, love. I've never uh, actually uh, looked until at everybody my floods own. in and goes, ah, let's mess with this guy. Let's mess yeah. with this. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of classes, yeah. speaking of classes, I do have an announcement to make. Cosmo Quest is uh, Cosmo yeah. Academy is doing two classes that are coming up. Uh, they're online classes. They're done Google Hangout style. There are eight you go students to Cosmo, per class. Yep, CosmoQuest.org/classes. Uh, you'll see the current offerings that are coming up on April 15th. We're doing Sun and Stellar Revolution, so I think that's Ray Sanders teaching again for yep. us. Dear Astronomer. Dear Astronomer. Uh, so there's a link there for Eventbrite where you can sign up. And then Introduction to Cosmology. We have Dr. Matthew Francis who's teaching that course starting April 23rd. And uh, he's Dr. Mr. Francis on Twitter. So yep. Dr. Mr. Francis is an unfortunate way it looks. Dr. But Mr. Francis. It's Dr. Matthew R. Francis. So, but, yes. But, you know, I mean, the whole thing with CosmoQuest, and this is where I begin our CosmoQuest rant, right, is that, you know, our goal on CosmoQuest is to really give regular folk an opportunity <laughs> to contribute to science that's actually getting done, to actually help with the work that astronomers need to, to complete their research. But we also recognize that for a lot of people, just like coming in and, and for example, mapping craters is not enough. You want to understand more of the underlying physics and astronomy of what's going on. And so, so this is kind of this next level with CosmoQuest is we're trying to actually provide courses that will ra help raise people's level of astronomy understanding and maybe to contribute at a more complicated level in the future. So I think this is this is great that these classes are happening. I'm really so excited. So please sign up. We we yeah. we unfortunately can't offer these for free because yes. we do want to pay yes. Matthew and Yeah, we and pay our instructors. <laughs> we pay our instructors. <laughs> yeah. But but all the mo money goes to literal costs that we have to pay. There, there's yeah. no one making a profit. It's, it's all time going into this. But this is one-on-one yeah. -on -one time with, or one-on-eight time with, uh, with actual astronomy professors. Yeah. So this is, you know, and this Nicole is... and I drop in occasionally. Yeah, yeah I, I went in the last class. The last class filled up quickly. Yeah. Um, but I went in for their, their final projects and I really enjoyed the final project. So this is my problem. This you know this isn't gonna scale very easily, but but it's cool that we're doing it. I can't think of a way that we can offer a thousand classes, but um <laughs> but <I'm freezer>. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I okay. want. Some kind of so, give me a heart attack. so I would like to leave all of you with the biggest giggle I've had all day. Uh -oh. Chat 1138 on YouTube suggested that the name for the Milky Way Andromeda collision should be Milk Dromedary. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> milk Dromedary. I love it. Um, some kind of camel that you milk. Um, okay. <laughs> All I can think of is dingleberries. <laughs> no! No! Oh, and, and on this there. note, I am going to officially wrap up tonight's virtual star party. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, everyone, for telescoping. That was great. Thanks for bringing us. I'm calling our first Saturday of the season, although I know it's not. It's about our third. It's okay. I still, I still oh, think it was awesome. If anyone, it's the first one we can see Cassini's division. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. First if anyone Cassini lives division. vaguely in the St. Louis area, I do real live star parties every other Tuesday night. So come hang out with us in the middle of nowhere in Illinois. Cool. And we're doing a Yuri's night party. Nicole. Cole is partying in San Antonio. Oh, I am shoot, partying I in Edwards. <laughs> I am partying in Edwardsville, Illinois, at Annie's Custard. So join I'm us. Go to Vancouver. Oh, yeah, holy. yeah, Everybody, celebrate Yuri's night on Friday night. Why awesome. Not? All right. All right. We'll see you guys all later. Thanks, all everybody. Right. Bye. Bye.